Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Introduction to Cryptography, Part 2. Today we're going to begin by discussing some hashing basics, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion on some additional cryptography topics. We have a lot of information to go over, not a whole lot of time as usual, so let's go ahead and begin this session. We will begin by discussing some hashing basics. The idea behind hashing is to create a method of easily verifying the integrity or authenticity of a set of data. The process involves using an algorithm on the data to create a unique value that can be used to verify the data set. This value is known as the hashed value or message digest and no matter how many times the data set is run through the hashing algorithm, the same hashed value is derived. That is, as long as the same algorithm is used. The message digest can also be known as a one-way hashed value. This is because it is impossible to take a hashed value and determine what the data is. This helps to keep the data secure and provides an integrity check. Let's discuss some hashing concepts. Hashing algorithms only work on data. They do not work on the headers of a file. No matter how many times the header of the file changes, as in changing the name of a file, the hashed value of the data remains the same. The hashed value returns a fixed length that depends on which algorithm is used. A specific algorithm will always generate the same size hash. It is theoretically possible to recreate a hashed value by running enough data through the hashing algorithm. That's kind of that infinite monkeys and the Shakespeare concept. When two hashed values are the same, it is called a collision, and that actually signifies that that hashing algorithm is broken. The collision concept is the idea behind a birthday type attack. Then we have HMAC hash-based message authentication code. This is the process of using a secret key, which is a data value only known to the communicating parties, combined with the data set to derive the hashed value. And that hashed value actually makes up the message authentication code portion of HMAC. HMAC provides an authentication check verifying the identity of the sender as well as an integrity check of the data. Some common hashing algorithms include MD, that's Message Digest. It was created by Ron Rivest. MD5 is the current standard used when using the Message Digest algorithm and always returns a 128-bit hashed value. As a side note, the MD5 algorithm is considered to be broken and should only be used in a limited way. The other most common hashing algorithm is SHA, that's Secure Hash Algorithm. It was created by the National Security Agency, also known as the NSA. SHA-1 is the most popular version of SHA and always returns a 160-bit hashed value. There is also SHA-256, and that version always returns a 256-bit hashed value. And finally, there is SHA-512. It is also a newer version of SHA that returns a 512-bit hashed value. It's time to conclude with a brief discussion on some additional cryptography topics. First up is key escrow. This is the process of storing or giving encryption keys to a third party. The third party can then use those keys to decrypt any messages that those keys use. In some cases, governmental agencies have required the turning over of encryption keys to aid in investigations. Key escrow is a highly controversial topic. Most organizations that deal with encryption and cryptography do not like the concept of key escrow. Then there is ephemeral key. It is a temporary key that is used to encrypt a single message within a communication channel. Ephemeral key reduces the chances that a hacker will acquire a key set and be able to decrypt the message. 
ephemeral key is used in perfect forward secrecy. This is a process that generates a random public key or ephemeral key for each session so that the private key exchange can be kept secure. In cryptography, there is the concept of a digital signature. Digital signatures are created to digitally sign messages in order to prove the integrity of the sender. A message digest or hashed value is created from a set of data and then encrypted with the sender's private key. The receiver decrypts the hashed value with the sender's public key and then verifies the hashed values. That is how digital signatures work. Digital signatures also provide a means of non-repudiation. The sender can't deny that he or she is the entity that sent the message because it was encrypted with their private key. Then there is a leptic curve. It's a newer asymmetrical encryption algorithm that employs the Diffie-Hellman algorithm for the exchange of keys and the digital signature algorithm, or DSA, for the digital signatures. And finally, there's quantum cryptography. It's an encryption standard that is used with fiber optic communication to determine if the message has been intercepted. It relies upon the fact that any interaction with the photons in transit will cause the state of the photons to change and therefore indicate that that message has been intercepted. That concludes this session on Introduction to Cryptography, Part 2. We began by discussing some hashing basics, and then we concluded with a brief discussion on some additional cryptography topics. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you'll watch another one soon.